Howdy, y'all. Up bright and early this morning. I have a lot I want to talk with you guys about today. Hope you're all doing well and you're connecting with people and you're going out into the world and being courageous and sharing your truth, sharing the truth of Jesus Christ and the good words that um, come from him and all the beautiful people that are here uh, standing up for the truth and aren't going along with the myriad of satanic lies that we're awash in. So I want to start today by looking at some, you know, random, you know, when you go on the internet and you get the immediate like things that pop up. This was one day. I don't remember exactly what day this was, but this was a, maybe two weeks ago. This popped up and I just was like, I have to take a picture of this because it's so ridiculous. This is what the news is. It's just complete nonsense all the time. The Vatican confirms ban on Catholics becoming Freemasons. They're all synagogue of Satan, backwards nonsense. Catholicism is inversion Christianity. Freemasons are those odd fellows, obviously, who ostensibly all are in cahoots and are all under the same umbrella of Satanism. And you can call them whatever you want. Let's just call them the evil ones, the dark ones. And then right below that, the U.S. has special rules for satellites, and we know all too well that satellites are nothing but CGI nonsense, um, and we do not live on a spinning ball where any of that makes any sense ever. All of our telecommunications are ground-based, of course. But this is not what this video is about. I just want to address this at the beginning because it is difficult to get information, and especially regarding diet in our crazy world, zany world. So let's dig into it. So when thinking about diet, I think it is good to consider the Messiah, right? And I read this recently. I'm in, I, I just started Romans right now. And uh, yeah, Jesus provided fish for a multitude and fed people. And then he had some himself, suggesting that eating fish is not a sin. Um, and it's, it, the Bible apparently does state that Jesus didn't eat anything else, any other meat besides fish or any other animal product. I don't like meat as a word, um, because you can have avocado meat. Meat is kind of vague, but you know, that's a bit of nitpicky. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily think eating fish is wrong per se. I don't really know. I don't eat fish. Um, I don't know if I'll ever eat fish again. I probably won't, but yeah, we'll get into it. So also, many biblical scholars believe that Jesus was vegetarian. But think about this. This is the obvious um, reality of Jesus. If you look at him, like he wasn't out calling out inversion and Satanist. I mean, and he was calling out Satanists, but he wasn't calling out inverts or anything like that. So it's still this one love. There's still this capacity. There's this bit of God in everybody. And you've got to spread a good message. And you can't be beholden to um, a tongue that, to your own tongue, that has some just gripes. I, I think that's really it. Like when you have gripes with things, when you assert too much value on something and you compare and you get all wound up you tend to say things that are a little bit harsh and i found that in my life for certain so yeah here going forward uh there's nothing loving or compassionate about factory farms and slaughterhouses where billions of animals live miserable lives and die violent bloody deaths there is not um and i don't think jesus would be very happy with where our world has gone i mean he's technically here all the time but observing everything and you know, it's, it's pretty special. And if you don't believe in him, that's fine. But um, I think if you read his messages, I think you'll begin to have some faith. So this is another little aspect. Jesus may have been a pescatarian. He may have eaten fish like we've talked about. And Paul, who's the one that is in doubt, he's the one that we see as a false apostle. He's the one who's basically the whole book of Acts is about Paul. And Paul is a Christian murderer. He sent uh, the disciples to the to the priests, and the priests are still evil to this day. And yeah, we're living in hostile times, of course. Um, but there's a way 
you know, there's a Jesus, there's a path. Um, and apparently Paul is open to vegetarianism. But if, if Paul is effectively like Lucifer, like Satan is kind of like the godhead of the evil. And then Lucifer is like the angel. But then Lucifer is like the, I don't know, like the, the son of Satan, like God and then Jesus. Paul kind of is that Lucifer character and it's weird that he'd be open to vegetarianism because you'd think Satan would be a hyper carnivore just trying to undo all God's creation and something that's always bothered me about the Bible makes it difficult to read at times is all the sacrifices that take place in the Old Testament and it does feel like uh, it is like people have said before maybe the God of the Old Testament is Satan to some extent because or is Satan because um and this can't be true because of all the beauty in isaiah and all this but just there's some weirdness in it where it doesn't make sense why would god take all this time to make a beautiful animal and then say and then want you to sacrifice that said animal to him it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't it's wrong i don't get it uh so moving forward so uh let's see this is five years ago I went to an MC Escher, the guy that did the, you know, the staircases. This is the same artist, the staircases, the optical elusive illusion staircases. I don't remember the name of the painting, but um, the same gentleman. He did another optical illusion here. He's great at these where we have these fish and the birds, right? So you have this kind of like moral relativism with life where it's like everything's engaging with each other and uh, it's hard to say like, maybe you just eat sustenance i've seen a seagull eat a squirrel like that's a video on youtube that you can watch it is bananas try and find it seagull eating a squirrel it is ridiculous but it it it, it uh it goes to this it goes to this where it's like there are pretty obvious carnivores in our world things like wolves things like just dominant carnivores uh foxes lions such and such but then there's also omnivorous creatures that take chances and will just eat what they need to to survive and it's important to consider that given circumstances and it's just an important thing to think about is what are we what you know what is our role here and what are we here to do and there are so many ways to look at our experience and i think it is simple we're supposed to be stewards good to this earth we're supposed to be good to the animals and i think a big part of this video is about dominion we're supposed to have dominion over animals maybe but if, you know, I, I kind of disagree with that, but if I think dominion meaning that we're supposed to take care of them, we're not supposed to use them to our own being. I, right now, as I'm talking, I have my beautiful kitty cat tortellini at the base of my bed, and he's not neutered. He's a sweet boy. Um, I love him very much, and I still feel like there's so much more I can be doing for him, making his own food. I give him canned food, and I feel terrible for it, so... There's so much depth to this experience, and we've got to be really kind to each other, I think, at, at the heart of things like Jesus is. So looking at the human anatomy, I think this is a great graphic here, because if you just look at the teeth, look at the teeth of a human, look at the teeth of a uh, monkey. Um, this may be a chimpanzee, but even so, uh, monkeys I know have similar teeth, chimpanzees being fake, that is. Um this is, looks like a donkey to me. We've got, what do we have, a bear? Yep, and then a lion. And if you look, um, sorry, excuse me. Uh, we have, obviously, omnivores eat meat and vegetables. Humans are often thought, thought of as omnivores, but I do not believe that we really are based on our dental palate and our the length of our small intestine and just the way we behave. There's so many myriad of things, so many things that you can point to that show that it doesn't make sense. I mean. Can you fathom, you know, running after a squirrel or a, a fox without any of the tools, any of the machinations of man and just jumping on it and eating it? I mean, maybe if you were really, really starving, but I think you probably would opt for a berry and you probably wouldn't even be able to catch these animals. They're so, um, they're so quick. Um, and I think that's because we're not made to eat them. They're, we're meant to live among them and love them and so if you look here, I believe a lot of the hypercarnivores, especially the lions and the, the bigger ones, they are bred into existence. I believe we started with animals like my kitty cat, tortellini, um, smaller animals, and then we have these Satanists that have, just want to create crazy 
animals and hypercarnivores, and a lot of the representation of countries are these hypercarnivores. We have eagles in America, we have lions as Great Britain, and so forth. It's just, it's very common to have these predators as the the talismanic, the the talus, the like the go to animal for these places. And um, if you look, hypercarnivores have really short uh, intestines, 1.5 to 3 times body length. Um, you look at a bear, maybe an omnivore, something that eats vegetables and meat, uh, about three times the body length, but still pretty short. Herbivore um, intestines about 20 times. So uh, four paws with hooves, walks on four paws, of course, herbs. Um, and then we're frugit based on this demographic just how our, our our mouth looks we're more frugivorous um, and a little bit more goes into that as well we have a digestion system that takes about 12 to 18 hours compared to the herbivores 24 to 48 um, we have a long intestine about nine times look it's like the the, the the true herbivores the donkeys you know ungulates um, cows so forth uh 20 times so they're, they're they take so long they have so many nutrient receptors within their body it is a long process to to get through all of their food and they eat only plant matter so i know for a fact i know from my life that um that the fruit uh, the, the, the food that has always tasted best to me that has always been without a doubt hydrating and healthy and felt right has been fruit and uh, this goes along with our dental palate and our intestine so moving forward this is a great um, graphic to study I'm, I'm only going to go gloss over it here but great graphic to study so here we have the digestive systems of car in carnivores you know in, in the um, physical is shown here it, it's not nearly as big and the other thing to be note is that when these carnivores are, are um, taking down their food sorry i don't know uh they they throw it down their mouth it's like they bite bite and then it just goes straight back whereas we masticate we chew we take a while to eat our food um we are more uh we, we just clearly are more frugivorous or herbivorous um and if you look at it our int the intestine of an, a rabbit here exam for example is way longer it takes much longer to process all these foods we're masticating, we're chewing, it's a, these nutrients are spreading throughout us more slowly. And if you want to get into this breeding thing, my partner and I have been talking about this, and we think that we believe that all animals were originally frugivorous, um, herbivorous, and then it, humans, or you could say these evil entities, have came in and done all this breeding to make it so that we have hypercarnivores. I don't know if this is true, but I can see it. I can see it. So... We've effectively shortened the intestine of these animals, and um, who knows if that's if that's true for certain, but I, I believe it. So here's a, is, a, is a good uh, way to look at it, the small intestine. Look how much is going on there. If you're going to process animals, um, it's a lot to get through. And just thinking of it from a trophic level perspective, trophic level being um, something I learned back in, whew, was this, 12 years old, I was, I was sixth grade. Um, basically there's there's layers to how we eat right the food um what's it called the um the trophic levels it's so it's you have uh you have the sun and, and the rain and all these factors that nourish the plants photosynthesis and um they these things grow our plants and then we can eat these plants and then you have animals that eat these plants so effectively the animals are getting the nutrients from the plants and if you eat animals you're getting nutrients through the animals so it's a secondary source it's a the trophic level is one step further you're getting less nutrients people will argue against this and i think a big argument is protein and then also another big argument is um the uh what is it Oh, the um, oh the, the processing of, of veggies. So back to this demographic, herbivores, right? Take they can process veggies a little bit better than we can. Eating raw plant matter it takes a little bit longer for us plants and such. So that's why frugivorous, right? 
fruits go right down the hatch. They're ready from the tree. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat vegetables and, and whatnot. It's just, I think ideally our diet should be primarily fruit. It's, I don't do this. Again, I, this is not me, but I, it makes sense to me. I want to get there. I want to be eventually, I want to eat mostly fruit. Um, and it's as simple as tomorrow doing it, today doing it. You know, it's just that simple. Just refusing to doing the same kind of things I'm doing and changing it up. And that's how simple it is to all this. It's really, you can change pretty quickly. You don't need drugs to change and stuff. So yeah, looking at the small intestine, there's so much going on here. It's a long system. You need really simple foods to go down readily. And that's my art. That's my contention. Do I know if it's, do I know if it's certain? I don't know, but it makes sense to me that an apple would be much easier to process than say a chicken, a chicken wing. So a big part of me um, going along this path of being what I am today, which is a vegan plus honey. So I'm a vegan. I don't eat any animal products aside from honey. So I eat and that is in question with me. I don't feel great about that. I don't eat honey all that often, but I do eat it. I do think it tastes delicious. I do think it has some beneficial medicinal properties, but I'm not positive if we ought to be eating it. Um, we'll get into that later, but this documentary uh, is very powerful. It goes into all the various ways that we take that we, that we treat animals. It's very hard to watch. Uh, you do not want to watch it on a empty on a with food in front of you, if you, especially if you are eating animals or eating animal products, because it goes into depth about how we treat animals, and it's not very good. It's all the disgusting things we do. So, this anim this this documentary was a bit had a big impact on me, um, and was very difficult to watch, and definitely made me more kind and conscientious of all the animals all the creatures around us and how we're all equal when it's all said and done because we're all god's creatures god's creations so i went vegan um it was 2017 april my birthday is in april i did it the day of my birthday and i showed my parents this documentary and this was the documentary that really it wasn't the thing but it was another big catalyst and why I went vegan. And here you have at the bottom, um, you know, the animal holocaust is one of the tubers. And I've obviously made my point about the holocaust being a fake thing. But you, you know what I'm getting at. It's, you could just, just take the animal holocaust, take that word out and put genocide there. I mean, we have that representation in our life that I believe is fake, false. Um, I wasn't there 80 years ago, obviously, with the holocaust. But I made that video. Check it out. And this is a great speech. I think you should check it out if you are interested. He breaks it down. Um, and it's, it's a phenomenal, like it says, life-changing. Very interesting to listen to speech. We treat animals poorly. This guy is a super activist. I remember he, he actually saved a bunch of minks from a mink farm and did it overnight, got arrested, all that. I, I personally don't believe that that's the form of activism that's going to make a huge difference. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll have a change of heart at some point. But I think that you're going to do it by being calm and not crazy. I think that's how you really make changes. You have to be really calm. It's, it's, I can already feel my, like, you know, the butterflies, but it's, it just makes sense to me. You have to be calm with all of this. You can't be fast forward rushed or any of that because it won't get through to people. People are receptive to calm, um, gentle understanding and, and, not feeling like they're wrong, but that it's a different way of thinking about things. It's a different, different angle. Comparison is the death of true enrichment and understanding because everybody has a unique path. And that makes this life so interesting. I'm up at four in the morning. What the heck am I doing, right? So following that, uh, this may have been a year later, maybe just maybe within the year, I made this uh, this is pretty silly art in some ways because, yeah, you got the caveman in the background. I think this kind of looks like a Martin to some extent. I wasn't awake to the whole Androgyne thing. And um, I uh, also, I, I, I didn't, I think I, yeah, I must have clearly must have believed in cavemen because here you have them in the cave by the fire and primitive people. And maybe that, maybe that's true to some extent, you know, before structures and stuff, uh, but not. You've always been gardening and 
this just feels wrong. You can see it right here in the in the cow's faces. I mean, a lot of people like to um, dehumanize animals or de not humanize. That's a terrible way to phrase it. De um, soul like they don't like to think of animals having souls or they're lesser than. And I just completely disagree with this. Sorry if you if you disagree, that's fine. Um, but I disagree. Um, I believe animals have souls. They're very conscientious. They're very intelligent. And yeah, this this milk is made for her. It's made for this baby. It's not made for the human. You, human, you're supposed to get your own milk. And um, we'll get into that. I the essence being that if mammary fluid, right? Um, milk. It's mammary fluid. It's for babies. So why are we drinking baby fluid past babyhood, toddlerhood, maybe? And you see so many examples of this being wrong. I mean, uh, I, I wasn't a big fan of this show, but I remember in Game of Thrones, there was this character who's like breastfeeding and he's like seven or tw he's old. He's like old, old, old. And it, it, he's, re he's, re he's um, stunted and he, he's like, he's weird and strange. And yeah, I think that milk is made for us in babyhood and, and any um anything that goes against that is uh it, it just it, it seems wrong and i think it creates this kind of lethargy in society there could be this argument that there's comfort that comes from milk um but yeah well um we'll get into that i'm just getting excited and ahead of myself so you have this progression right this kind of primitive man coming into this um farmer john milking his cow but it's the same idea right or a cow sorry um cows over here and the, and the calf is sad both of them just look you know just like i'm going the, the mama's just like i gotta get through it you know she's not kicking him i would kick him kick her whatever um just get out of my face this is not what i want you know grabbing my boobs right like if you were you know you're a woman out there in the world I, even myself you know as a man with with nipples, it's it'd be weird if someone just grabbed them, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be odd? If someone just grabbing your nipples, it's not yours. It's my baby's. What are you doing? So I think we gotta get to that point eventually. Maybe that'll be heaven. I don't think I, I have a trouble seeing it here, but hopefully. But yeah, not for not for us. And then uh, what it's coming to nowadays, which is babies taken away. Babies often becomes veal, and that is baby cow. Uh, that is uh, slaughtered and then, oh, it's tender, so special dishes and such because, you know, we're a human-centered world where everything's about humans and all the other, most for the most part, and a lot of animals are left by the wayside. And we'll get into this. This is pretty deep. Um, but yeah, machine, you know, you have the chafing of the udders. It's pretty grotesque and it's very, like, tag on the ear, just evil slavery um can't cannot if it, if you come away from this video with anything stop supporting factory farms like that is just obvious to me don't just please stop so all cows in the dairy industry are forcibly and repeatedly artificially inseminated this is because cows like all animal like all mammals humans included only produce a constant supply of milk after giving birth because that's what it's for. Everything we're eating, artificial, artificial, fake, wrong. They produce their milk for the same reason all mothers do, to feed their young. Instead of this happening, though, the cows, the cows' babies are removed and either slaughtered for veal, as I said, or raised to suffer the same fate as their mother, females. After just a handful of these repeated pregnancy birth cycles, the cow's stressed body begins to struggle and milk production starts to slow, at which point she is sent to slaughter and used in low-quality products such as ground beef or hamburgers. Interesting, low-quality is stated there. Obviously, this is a vegan page, but yeah, you're not going to get a lot of nutrients out of something that's like like that. It's ground, it's cooked, it's so... It's just not... It doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it. And Hamburgers were considered for poor, peop for poor people or just, you know, more wretched back in the day. And I mean, they really... I mean, don't get me wrong, I grew up on this stuff. I didn't go vegan until I was 24 and 23, 20, 23, I think I was veg vegetarian for sure. Maybe even 22. 22, I was like pretty, I was pretty much vegetarian. Um, but 24, I was vegan. And up until that point, I just, you know, I would go to the supermarket and I looked at a 
I looked at the uh, steak or I looked at milk and I didn't make, I just, I knew what it was, but I didn't make the deeper connection. It was so far removed. It's the way it's designed. It's clean. You don't have to do any of the work, but if you were to do this yourself, I don't think you would, I don't think you would eat all this stuff, but yeah, here we go. So to go on the contrast of that, looking at the Hindus and the Indian culture, Hindus see the cow as a particularly generous, docile creature, one that gives more to human beings than she takes from them. The cow, they say, produces five things, milk, cheese, butter, or ghee, urine, and dung. The first three are eaten and used in worship of the Hindu gods, while the last two can be used in religious devotion or in penance or burn for fuel or you know, compost. When was the last time your cat gave you anything besides a dead mouse? And here's a fun fact. Hindus associate several animals with different gods and consider them sacred. Okay, that goes on to something else. But yeah, we, we are intimately involved with animals from that aspect at the end. But none is as revered as the cow because the cow is this life-giving central motherly force. I come to think of that Adam Hart mother, uh, what's that? Uh, Pink Floyd album. Pink Floyd, obviously. Girl boy, Pink Floyd. But, you know, it's a, I don't know, man. It's so weird looking at all this uh, at, from like a neutral perspective. It's hard. But um, it, it can be done. And um, yeah, I mean, if you think of cows as this life giving force and this kind of comfort, this motherly there, we're supporting them. OK, there's, there's an argument to be made there that maybe we should be taking in this milk and cheese as this kind of like comforting, deeper love of the cow. But then I, I still feel this. I feel this like it's it doesn't feel right. So. Do Hindus worship cows? No. Hindus do not consider the cow to be a god, and they do not worship it. Hindus, however, are vegetarians. So yeah, that's a big thing. The whole culture doesn't eat animals. It's pretty interesting. It's definitely a place I want to visit India. Pretty, I've always wanted to visit all, all the way around the world. I, I, money and just the way that the society is constructed. And I mean, looking into all this stuff and just being you know at odds with the whole fake virus thing that's going on, not wanting to travel um and all that wearing masks and stuff uh i really haven't been interested in that but yeah eventually hopefully these satanists these these evil people are shut down and we can override we can we can reclaim our sovereignty that's the way we gotta say we gotta reclaim our reclaim our sovereignty live in the spirit of jesus christ and um be able to explore this place in full the way it's supposed to be it's a small world after all i mean we've got to explore this place it's not I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you stay where you're planted ultimately, but you still go to explore and understand people deeply because that's important. You can't be ignorant and just assume and presume. And I feel like because I haven't traveled a ton, I feel that way. I feel like I can't, I'm often ignorant and I often presume, I often assume and I make an ass out of you and me. Um, but the mother of all, um, so sorry, going forward. In the Vedas, the oldest of the Hindu scriptures, the cow is associated with the deity, the mother of all gods. Hindu imagery often pictures a pretty cow, usually white, garlanded with flowers as a sign of the faith special reverence. Hindus even have a cow holiday go, called Gopastami. This year on November 19th, when all cows, even the ones we just passed it, when all cows, even the ones left to wander through busy streets and rural villages, are washed and dressed with flowers. How beautiful is that? Like, that is so beautiful. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with the milking, but just the, the treatment, the wonderful treatment of cows. To harm a cow or kill a cow, especially for food, I mean, you can consider milk food. And I, I'm sure there's cows there that aren't crazy about the idea of milking for the sake of humans. It is considered taboo by most Hindus. So it's an interesting psychology to look at. I don't really know. Um, you know, it's between the cow and the person. Is it, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it is. And I'm sure a cow would provide for a human if need be, or a baby, a baby human if need be. Um, but I think under ideal circumstances where there is sustenance, I don't think a cow is going to do that. And a cow is just going to want to produce milk for their baby. And that's it. Like it's normal. It's not your mammary glands. Um, and then on this idea, just to dig a little deeper into the dairy uh, industry, cheese, right? Cheese. I mean, I guess, um, I guess prior to this, sorry, sorry, I, I, dancing around a little bit. We'll get into the rhythm here. Um, a big part of milk is that it's been highly marketed. The Got Milk campaign um, is huge. And I think, I don't know for certain, but what I've, what I've found, what I've, what a lot of people say, a lot of people claim is that um, 
instead of milk calcifying your bones, milk actually deteriorates your bones. And I think that makes sense because it's the wrong milk. You're supposed to be taking in mama's milk, your mom's milk. We are so, in my opinion, um, we are so far gone that we're drinking cow's milk. It's just wrong. Um, but there, there is something to be said for it, like why it is celebrated across the world. And maybe, maybe it's this Baphomet thing. I don't know, but it's a potential reason. Hyper predator lying to you about everything kind of mentality. They're not, a lot of them aren't good people. I'm not saying, obviously I've said before, I've said a million times, it's not all androgynes. It just, wouldn't that make sense for Satan to flip the genders? <laughs> wouldn't it make sense? Like, but again, their I think their religion they believe in the Adam Cadmon, um, beautiful video from uh, um, LBC Elrica regarding that concept and how they think of themselves and maybe they think of regular humans as clay and and they think of themselves as light and pure. But I don't know how you could think that when you're lying all the time and have this insular club. Anyways, uh, on to cheese. So. In, new, in movies and just in general, when you say some things like cheesy or just ultimate cheese, I think, I think of like Star Wars. Like even if you go along with everything in Star Wars, it's such a cheesy movie. Like blue and red uh, glow sticks fighting and just such ridiculous cheese. It's just, it's not like intelligible. It's very cheesy. Um, it's a not good or original. So it's like, why you don't need cheese. It's like very... It's, it's, it's excessive. Dairy is very much, it's there for comfort. It's comfort food. It's not necessary. They argue calcium, but I'm telling you, look into it. Um, I'm giving a poor, poor explanation on this aspect, but look into it. Uh, I believe that it deteriorates your bones and it's not, you just don't need it. It might taste good because you're conditioned to like it. And I, to this day, I eat, um, I eat dairy-free cheese with things like I, I I definitely am not a raw vegan. I, I eat I go to the store and I get stuff to make meals. I, I'm I'm I make complex meals. I don't eat simple meals all the time. I love simple meals and they probably are the best for me, but I still eat those complex meals. So I still got a long way to go in my opinion. So um yeah, I don't I don't think it's necessary. And this is gonna segue into um what I think are like the three cardinal um, food products, the, the animal products. So the next one is eggs. And this is another like CAFO study here. So how many eggs do chickens lay? In fact, the process of making and passing an egg requires so much energy and labor that in nature, wild hens lay only 10 to 15 eggs per year. The red jungle fowl, the wild relatives from whom domestic layer hens are descended, lay one to two clutches of eggs annually with four to six eggs per clutch on average. Their bodies can never sustain the physical depletion of laying the hundreds of eggs that domestic chickens have been forced to produce through genetic manipulation. It is a common misconception that chickens are always just naturally giving eggs because modern egg hens have been intensively bred to lay between 250 to 300 eggs a year. So what do you have there? What do you have like a, man, what is that? 30 fold? Yeah, 30 fold increase, 20 to 30 fold increase. An egg laying. It's insane. These people, these chickens are being raped. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being a, a, a hen? And it's just unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Not to mention that in these CAFOs, they haven't been conf they, confined in animal feeding operations for those that don't know. Um, they have these birds. They had their beaks sawed off because they don't want them fighting each other. And, and killing each other so that they can't produce these eggs. It's insane. And then they eventually go to slaughter, of course. So it's pretty messed up what we do. And then this 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 part is particularly um, close to me. I have had a tapeworm. And I believe I either got it from kissing a puppy or I got it from eating an empanada at some Argentine restaurant. And this was right before I went to Hawaii and I did a garlic cleanse and got it out of me. But I, it was an awful feeling. I remember learning about how certain actresses, I mean, Swire, it's weird to even think about trying to maintain their weight, uh, would take tapeworms voluntarily. It's just disgusting. It's a parasite. Um, and they feed on eggs, they feed on meat, and they feed on dairy. 
<laughs> what do you know? So it's animal matter. They don't do so well with the plant matter. So the parasites feed on the bad stuff. So what do you think you want out of your body? What do you think you might have? And then it's a big illusion that, oh, these third world countries are the only ones that have parasites. No, 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 no. Parasites are everywhere. You need to do some good studying on that. Um, not research. I hate that word because it's, it's your discovery. Disc, like this, like the world you live in. We don't live on a ball. Disc, ovary. Um, and you got stuff to come to. So we've got so much to share, so much to so much to see. Um, and yeah, I would. I, eggs are a prime breeding ground for these, and they're often in eggs. Or if you eat eggs and you have a parasite, it will feed very well off of that egg. It produce more eggs, and it just goes on and on and on. So another thing with eggs, you know, you sure you've smelled a smelly old egg fart before, right? Oh, I had a friend. Man, every time he farted, for whatever reason, he used to have the eggiest farts. I think he just ate eggs and bacon every day. It's a very traditional American breakfast. Eggs and bacon. Orange juice, right? Got to get that OJ. Got to get that orange 33 juice. Um, I got I love orange juice, but yeah. Um, but yeah, the sulfuric smell. Who smelled? Who's sulfuric? Who? Satan. So I think of like overaptors, which are fake, obviously, but they're just a disgusting like kind of creation where they're eating eggs, stealing eggs. I think Gila monsters, I don't know if those are real or not. I got to look into them more. Probably real, but I don't know. Um, a lot of fake animals out there, but they eat eggs. They eat turtle eggs. It's just, it, it seems like a hyper carnivore type thing. It doesn't seem like something that we're doing. It doesn't seem quite us. And obviously I'm a little bit opinionated here, but Unlike the cow, I don't really have as uh, milk. I don't really have as many reasons to eat eggs besides just the generic protein thing. Uh, maybe they're like maybe you could contend that if you do eat chicken, then you got to eat all parts of the animal. Like there's a lot of people that will eat like the seed, the whole, the fruit and the flower of the plant because it's important to eat everything. Like the goji berry, it's like it's a, such a high antioxidant fruit, and people will eat the entirety of it. The plant, the the seeds, the fruit, and bleep, get on the goji berry train. That, that will keep you alive for a long time. High in antioxidants. Um, great food. I love it. One of my favorite foods. But yeah, um, I guess you could contend that, you know, if you eat chicken, you should also eat the egg. I don't know. I really don't know. But I, 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 I disagree. So, okay. The, the third one is, is honey, of course. Um, but I'm going to get into that at a later, at a later part of this presentation. Um, right now I want to get into what I did with initial veganism and why I think there's some good things about it, but why I think it's a hard sell and I think it needs some work. So I did this cube of truth thing and I was pushed to do it by my ex partner. We were together for about four years and the last year or so we were going to this, we were going to Denver and, um, uh, like the Boulder and these, these Colorado metro areas and we were going out in front of uh, people and you, you so what you would do is you can see in this image you would either stand with and hold the hold the TV or your laptop and they'd give you a program and you'd play it and it would be just slaughterhouse footage poor animal treatment people would walk by you're in this big agora you know this big public space and most people would kind of just brush you by but occasionally you get someone who stops and is just looking at it and it's really it's really pretty mesmerizing it's a pretty powerful experience um because they're like wow like i don't take this into consideration when i go to the market and there's a couple people that you'll get that are just like you know what i'm going to slow down you know what i'm going to stop and it was cool when you had those conversations but either you're in you're in there wearing the guy fox you know v for vendetta mask um you know i don't want to attach my face to this i don't want to i think it's this is good the mask is good i think you should but i but I, my disagreement is that you should wear an animal mask instead of this weird guy fox v for vendetta thing because it's probably just a fake event anyways but then um, because I think if you were showing your face, it's, you're going to show your emotion. It's very hard to be neutral. So I think it's good to have that mask on, but I think ultimately it'd be it, it, eventually when we're healed more, be neutral about it. And maybe we want to have to show all the slaughterhouse village footage. We can just be very calm and explain things without all this, I don't know, all these props. But yeah, you can see this dude in the back. Um, I don't know. It looks kind of vaguely like a real dude. I, I, mean, I can't tell from all this far away, but relatively long neck. I don't know. Um, but he's the, looks like he's the one who's telling people about it. So you would go, the theoretical person would come in, they see this footage, and then one of these people back here would be there. And they'd be like, hey, what do you think? 
what do you, you know, what do you think of what's, what do you see here? And you talk to them and maybe you just relay some of what your experience is, but you, the idea is you want to be very calm, um, very relaxed and explain how life's a process and we're all at different points in this process. And this is just something that we're at right now. And I think it's important. Um, but I think this is a bit too forward. I think if you're going to do this, this kind of, this kind of true thing, I think you do it with the animal masks, not the Guy Fox masks. And then maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you have like events for it instead of like in the middle of an agora. But it was a pretty interesting thing to be a part of. And it's definitely primed me for this, this true thing, this deeper true thing about the Baphomet and all. It's just it's, the world we live in is so crazy. But so when we, when I was doing it, very rarely, I don't think ever we had a crowd this big. This is enormous. This is some giant city. I think the biggest we ever had was maybe like a three by three or a four by four, you know, square. It was never this giant cube. But yeah, I mean, there is the connotation of the Islam thing, the cube. And we've talked about how we think Islam's a fake religion and it's like Judaism just disguised. Um, maybe there's something to that. Everybody's wearing black, cube of truth. I don't know, man. It's it's confusing. Um, but I do believe in nonviolence, so I don't want to get the religious involvement with that. That's just pure, you know, nonviolence. So, okay, if you haven't already put down whatever food you've got, just, I'm not going to show anything graphic in terms of like real life, but this is a artist illustration, uh, where the animals are reversed with us. So, this is a great thinking topic, and I'm very thankful um, to, I believe her name is Barbara, Barbara Danielson for making all this art. So here we have a feeding operation for the cows. They're all in these little pens. They got their little feed. To pretend it's a baby. How does that make you feel? And it's a cow doing it, and it looks so bizarre, doesn't it? Look at the little babies all chained up. This makes me feel awful, but... It should make you feel just as awful as the cows because we really are equivalent at the end of the day. And I think that's part of life's lesson. I, you know, I think people talk about being saved. I think that's a real thing. But think about what being saved means. It's hard. And look at this. Do you want to contribute to this? Pretend that you... I don't, I don't, I don't anymore. I haven't contributed this in a long time, but a lot of my life I have, and I have to own up to that when I die, I believe. So here we got the chickens and this is hard. I, I don't like looking at this, but she, this girl, she went through it because it's important to show this stuff. And um, it makes me, and I'm like starting to get choked up and tear a little bit, but this is what they do. This is what I was talking about. And I don't think she did it here. They don't, she doesn't have the noses removed, but she totally could. That's what they do. They remove the they remove the beaks and they have them on this conveyor belt, and it's all very impersonal. And our world is so deeply satanic and wrong. And the fact that I have to make this video and just the evil things people do, and probably some of these people are just doing it for money to make it in this world, this evil society. Um, but yeah, look at this little babies being. It's just disgusting. And this is what we do to chickens. And chickens aren't worse than us. They're not subservient. They're not, we're, we're equal to them. And they're beautiful. And I have a video on my channel playing with chickens. And... Okay. I'm just thankful to Barbara for, for doing this. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. So, going deeper, I mean, this is all messed up. Like, we've... Oh, we're so fucked up. I'm part of this. I, I, I'm part of this. I, I've taken in some of these products, and I'm part of this. Um, we, we mutated mice to put ears on them. Can you imagine if... Look at this. Can you imagine if the roles were reversed? I didn't think I was going to do this. I thought I was just going to get through this. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. But look. Look what he's pointing at. Is that he's, is he tapping on the glass or is he 
or she, yeah, with a bit of jaw, looks like a he. I don't know. It looks. I don't know. Fucking who cares? The person. <laughs> so this is a. This is just as valid though. This mouse and this mouse would never do this because my, I feel like. I don't know. I don't. I just don't feel like animals are as mean as we are. We're just so fucked up. Um. But yeah, look at what we've done. Did this to mice. We just fuck with them constantly. I don't know. We, all these animals we've just messed with so much. And this is what this Earthlings documentary is about. This is just. This is her interpretation, and oh, it's good. It's strong. It's good. Look at this. This is disgusting. Why do we do this, dog shows? How can you watch this shit? This always has made me feel uncomfortable. I can't... I've had this on Animal Planet. No, Ant Planet. Fake Planet. Uh, but, um... Yeah. Seeing these animals as our entertainment and using them. Dogs have really been fucked up by us, and yeah, how would you feel? How would you feel? How would you feel if we up on stage? Look at these animals. Look at that. Look at the, you can see the human expression. Maybe you can't see it in animals as much because you're not their species. But look at that expression. Do they want to be there? No. They're just like I just do it. I don't feel comfortable. I don't like being watched by all these people. I'm just getting over with it. And I'm sure if you're reading closer, if you're a little bit more connected to the earth and you're closer to these animals, you can see their true emotions and you can feel them. So. Here, I mean, this is this reminds me of that stupid fake gorilla shit where they shot the gorilla because it was taking care of the baby, but they didn't know. I don't think a bear is going to kill a baby. There's a great book out there. I wish I remember what it's called, but it's basically the essence of the book. I'll find it. Is uh, that, uh, you know, the mama and the, the mama and a daughter, go, or maybe it's a boy, I don't remember, but a mama and the child go out into the wilderness and... A bear and a cub go out into the wilderness. Mama bear and a cub go out into the wilderness. And the cub and the little baby child get lost. Both of them. And the bear finds the, the human child. And the, the mom, the human mom finds the cub. And both of them bring them back to their family. It, it's nice. And it's it's this, this kindness. And it's this respect. And it's this... Like, I just am so, I guess, excited. Excited for the capacity we have to... <laughs> to potentially change this world in such a dramatic way just be nice and conscientious of animals um but yeah here you have a, a cub falling into the human enclosure and the human's just doing what probably the bear would be doing huh like what are you i don't really huh? what's going on wearing a batman you know the she male i don't know whatever superhero it doesn't matter I'm, i don't think that was the connotation but <sighs> looking at him <laughs> Huh? And then the bear's just primed and ready. Oh, I don't know about to shoot him. It's messed up what we do. I don't think a bear is going to eat a human. Unless they're freaking starved. But that's not at a zoo. A zoo, they eat plenty. They eat too much. It's like domesticated animals for the most part. We overfeed them. So then here, where we got the elephant ride, right? I did this when I was a child feel wrong about it I mean, the elephant was there all day giving rides you think they wanted that you know I, how would i feel if i was giving rides all day? look exhausted sweating oh god oh you can feel it you have more bathing they're just unhappy i don't want to be here i just want to be respected and loved like everything everything wants to be loved and respected and if you don't take this stuff seriously i'm telling you you don't have a change of heart I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a hard video. Okay, so dog fighting. This is just obvious. I don't think many people do this. I've never been privy to this. But you know what I did do is I played Pokemon. And you know what Pokemon is? It's a light version of dog fighting. It gets people thinking, does that look good to you? Or bite your ear off, Mike Tyson, whatever. It's disgusting. The fact that we even have boxing is disgusting. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, just let him go. Let him fight. Let him go. Come on. I want mine to go. I want mine to win. Come on. Let's go. Let's go rally it on. Cockfighting is the same thing. It's fucked up. Satanic. Got a little, you know, I thought a collie tongue there, but no. Evil. Evil. Look at the roles reverse. You think you want to still think about this? This one is way more common. You have people doing this everywhere. I actually, I have a pretty intimate story with this. There's a town in, I think it's called Sawatch in, uh, Colorado, central Colorado, I believe. It's in the mountains. And uh, 
you go in the middle of the town, there's this giant, just disgusting, like every animal head you can think of, antlers, everything on the outside, on the inside is this giant hunting lodge, just disgusting. Look at it reversed. How do you feel? How do you feel? How does it make you feel? A human family was just taken and put on the wall. Look at the baby. It's a fucking rug. It hits me because I'm a human. And it, it's just weird. And I shouldn't be. I should be even all the way throughout. But look at that. Oh, look at my collection. I got my beer. I got my pipe. I just go out and I hunt for, for pleasure. So the deeper intimate connection besides to watch visiting that town was... I work for a guy who's, he has, um, Shim, has, uh, you know, Free Martin, has, uh, you know, a beautiful yard, take care, I garden for him, and uh, fruit trees everywhere, so all the deer flock to his yard, and he loves all of them and doesn't harm a soul, but in his house, he has tons and tons and tons of all these animal heads and and he talks about him as trophy room. That's what he calls it. It's trophy fucking room. You've gotta be kidding me. Sorry. Trophy room. F thing is hmm, sorry. Um and uh it's just wrong. It's wrong. And um uh, how you can have that dichotomy where you treat them well on your property, but then you go out and hunt and you probably killed hundreds and hundreds of animals. But then he eats animals and beyond that. It's just hard to, to find the line. I mean, this is what we're finding. It's hard to find the line. I mean, it's, it, it, it's pretty much just as wrong. If you go to the grocery store and buy a steak, you're just, you're saying it's okay to kill them. You 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 basically have the shotgun in your hand, you know? Or not the shotgun, but the, the cattle. You know, you're doing it yourself. You're going along with it. It's just as evil. But yeah, how does this make you feel? Fur, I don't think a lot of us necessarily do this anymore. This is a pretty big one that people don't, it's expensive, but and I've never done it. And this is what that Gary Yurofsky, you know, good, good, good guy at heart. And I don't, this bathroom, that thing's so weird, but just good guy at heart. Um, I guess I should say Andrew Giant thing. That's not fair to say bathroom. Head. Not everybody's a bathroom. Head. Um, but uh, yeah, how does that make you feel? dead human wearing it everybody's like oh she's the talk of the town look at her furs look at her furs evil and then they got the pretty eyelashes too this person did it so well this is just phenomenal this person's a genius it's freaking amazing oh, okay i bet a lot of you are in this boat i haven't gone here in a long time look at that there's a little it could be a satanic symbol i suppose i don't really know but um, arms and legs, that's what you're eating. Wings, right? Wings and thighs. And Kentucky Fried Humans. It's feather looking, feather licking good. Finger, right? Feather. This genius. Look at this. Can you, can, can you honestly go back to KFC after this? Can you? Does this make sense to you? Can you put yourself in that position if you really consider yourself to be an equivalent to all animals? Jesus, I'm sure does. I'm sure Jesus does. We are not above animals. Okay, everybody, they went through public education or some form of education, had this experience, or a lot of people did. I remember watching E.T. and loving the scene, loving the scene where Elliot and the rest of them, they, they free the frogs, free the frogs. And it gives you that little glimpse of hope that like, you know, in these crazy stories, there's some goodness in them. You know, E.T., the lie is the alien, right? But... The, the good is this, this scene of saving all the frogs. So in my life, I was in AP biology. Uh, and we had to, when I was in junior year, and I cheated and I, 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 I barely scraped through that class. I, I, I should have taken biology honors. I was not prepared. I, I had too many things going on. I was smoking pot. I, I was not in the right space. Um, but uh, we dissected cats. I hated that. It was the most evil thing I've ever done in my life. It was one of the most evil things I've ever done, and I was just going along with it. And I suppose that lessened the the weight of it is that everybody's doing it together, but it just felt wrong. The cat's already dead, of course, but this is make how does this make you feel? You know, I was an artist, you know, a big part of art, a lot of people do study these cadavers. I, I haven't studied a cadaver yet. I like I make I like making art. I'm not saying I'm particularly good. I like I think I'm alright, but um it's just something off about that, isn't there? But hey, 
you know, this is kind of justice for the frog, isn't it? All these frogs that are just killed for, oh, look at this. When you could just take one frog, you have the anatomy. You don't, you just have a picture. You don't need to have everybody get nitty and gritty. It's gross. You know, thank goodness for that E.T. scene. If anything is good from that E.T. movie, it's that scene. Free the frogs. Free them. And then what is this? I don't know what she's doing. Oh, because, yeah, you okay, of course. No, I'm sorry. In every classroom, you're going to have the ch the person who's rightfully screwed up by this. And this is the one who's like, whatever I'm doing in the project, I was like this. I was like, I'm not, you want to do it, go ahead. I think I did a little bit, but I, it was hard for me. I did not like it. And then this is, I'm actually writing a um, big comic book. This is my biggest one yet. It's like 100-something pages thus far. It's still going. It's called. It's going to be called Nutty Retribution. It's about me running over a squirrel and the squirrel getting back at my ass. But it's the squirrel's tail, so I don't kill him, obviously. The squirrel's going to get me, you know. But yeah, here you go. The raccoon, oh no, we accidentally hit a human. Oh no. What are you going to do? They're free, they're wild, and bleeding, and uh, Can you feel that? Look how good this artist is. Just amazing. Look at wildlife in the back. You see how Jean... That could be like the father and or another family. And like, oh, any car could hit them. They just might get it wrong because okay? they're not used to these cars. And it's not, it's like kind of, they, they know about them. They're intelligent, but still, but this is like the apex predator nowadays. It's like cars killing so many deer. We don't need to kill, we don't need to keep deer population down. Fuck, it's not our job. That's wolves' jobs. And we've killed wolves to near damn extinction. It's such a weird world. But I think, yeah, bring the wolves back. And what I said before about these apex predators. Well, we've got them, don't we? So let the, let the wolves live and let the wolves eat the deer. Don't don't run them over, man. I see this as a deer. It could be a raccoon, obviously, in this case. It's a raccoon. But, um, sorry, I don't mean to do injustice to the raccoon. All these animals are beautiful, but bring the wolves back. Let them do it naturally. Don't let us... Like, be very careful when you drive, please. Go slow. Don't... There's no reason to go fast. You don't have any places to be. Think about it. Take your time while you're here. You're here to do good and be good in the eyes of God. You know, you're just, you're here to do God's will, Jesus' will. So, okay, here this one, just, you know, this is the operation maybe earlier on in that chicken. I have that, I went through that other one earlier. They're all caged up. Look at that. Humans all caged up. How does it make you feel? You know, the Holocaust imagery we talked about, we've meant mentioned all the genocidal imagery. That looks pretty rancid, doesn't it? The slavery imagery. You know, this is what you're doing if you're if you're eating chicken. Sorry. If you go to a grocery store and you eat chicken, this is what it is. They can dress it up, say organic on it. This is it. Make it look good. That's it. And then you have a cup. I did this. I uh, This was hard. I was out in Greeley, Colorado. I went to one of these facilities. It was a cow facility, a cow slaughter facility. I don't remember what the fuck. I don't know what it's called. It doesn't matter. It's the demon thing. Oh. <sighs> um, it was hard. You saw these cows being drugged. They were killed. You could see the whole thing. They were mooing. They were unhappy. It just was so evil. And you have a bunch of us out here with signs like this. It's messed up what we do. Okay. This is an interesting one. Um, but yeah, Wild Earth. Think of like Animal Planet. Watching other animals do it. How does that feel? How would you feel, man, if a dog, if, you know, like occasionally my cat will like wander, my cat will wander in around in my room and they watch or be around when my partner and I are intimate. And I, it's not a huge deal, but I'd, yeah, I would prefer if you give us the space. So here, how does this make you feel? Here, I think, what do they have? Is this a meerkat? Is this what this is supposed to be? I think so. Just genius. Doesn't this, isn't this so weird? We're such a strange species. But if you really think of it along those equivalency lines. Oh, God. Foie gras here. Oh, just pure evil. Fattening them up. Fattening the ducks up. And, um... Yeah, I don't know how anybody can do this. You have to really be... Just lost. Or you have no emotion. No... no just You have to, like... What's the word I'm, you know what I'm looking for. You know what I'm looking for. You have to completely erase your compassion. Your, this is, Jesus? What would Jesus do if he saw this, if he was in the room? Just think about that. Jesus walks in, what happens? 
What happens here? Jesus walks in, pushes him aside, gets all these freed. You know, there's no way this is okay. There's no way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Feel that. Okay. This was always, this always felt wrong here in this. Remember you ever hear like, you ever hear the steaming lobster, the, the, my cat's ear just perked up. I'm making weird noises, but the high pitched, you know, the high pitched whistling just feels wrong. You know, this, this animal's dying and now, I don't know if this is true. This just could be some nonsense from the media powers. Who knows? Apparently lobsters can't die. They just don't die. They only will die if you kill them or, um, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't die. Like they won't die. They don't die of old age. They just keep going and going and going. Or maybe they do, but they'll live for a really, really long time. They're beautiful creatures. These these crustaceans, they're amazing. And look at that. Can you imagine that? A human in boiling water? Just feel that. Can you imagine yourself in boiling water? Hmm? What do you if reincarnation is real, what do you think happens? Hmm? What do you think happens if reincarnation is real? Maybe it's not real, but maybe you get judged in heaven. Either way. What do you think happens? ready to go right we know we know what's coming we all know it's coming ah oh, look at all the faces of agony look at that this is so master this, sorry i shouldn't i was about to say it master's a bad word this is so well done it's amazing people eating hey i want one. Oh, another one this is how we are just not thinking and just I can't eat ever eat lobster again. And something I remember too, I used to work at a King's at a King Supers. It's a grocery store in Colorado. It's Kroger or whatever. And um, I worked in the meat and seafood, so I was in the front lines of this. Oh man, I have had a hell of, heck of a life. And um, you know, seeing ground meat being made and just all the gross things about it, the, having to clean out the fish, the fish, and all just it's gross. What I found was I ate halibut, and halibut tastes the same as lobster. It's not like when you eat fruit and there's dis way more distinction between, say, you know, an apple and a blueberry and a goji berry. Um, there is little to no distinction between these white fish and lobster. I, I, it, unless you add all those things, like the butter and the salt, like there's very little distinction, in my opinion. Maybe a foodie's like, oh, no, no, no. But I, in my opinion, very little distinction, way less distinction than fruit or vegetables, way more distinction with those things that I think we're supposed to eat based on what I discussed earlier. Yeah, makes sense to me. Okay. Oh, this one's hard. Oof. Okay. Cockatoos, I believe, are parrots. I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not like a complete, I don't know everything. I don't know much. I'm kind of an idiot in many ways. Look at the little birds outside, you know, pecking around, the little human birds, if you will. Human in the cage, the whole life in the cage. I just want to be out with my friends. Look, hi, oh, what is it like in there? I wish we could save you. And then they're out at the gazebo just hanging out. You know, we're doing the right thing, keeping our bird in the cage. Man, it's it may, domestication is such a weird thing. Should we be doing it at all? You know, RFTK Ohio has a great point when he says, I don't know if we should do pets at all. He doesn't have pets, animals. I have my cat. I, I don't, again, like I said, he isn't neutered. A lot of animals get immediately spayed, neutered. Um, but he, you know, I got, I'm going to feed him better. I love him dearly. He was in a worse situation before, but I'm, I, you know, I've got a lot to do. I got a lot of work to do with him. I want to, you know, take him out, but I, I feel weird with him on a harness. It's just the fucking cars, man. I hate cars. I hate cars. They just kill everything. These fucking, these, this asphalt suppresses the grass and, this world is just so hard to live in, but yeah, the way the world is, it's it, to take my cat out and to, make, to have him live that life outside that he really hasn't lived. He's lived mostly inside his whole life. I'd have to take him on a harness because there's dogs out there. There's just other, you know, with their own animal, with all their own like persons, uh, companions. I'd hate the word pet. Pet is an evil word. Pet smart, pet shop, change your freaking name. <sighs> shouldn't shop there <sighs> just evil name um it's not a pet it's your companion that's what it is here it's a pet to you it's a pet to you oh yeah i just pet you when i want you do what i want okay how about this you're gonna adopt an animal from the humane society you got the sum been here forever here at the bottom the ugly one right missing teeth but just like hey i'm doing my best face i want to be home 
oh, I've got, you know, I've got a, I've got a busted eye. I got a, you know, I got a neck. Fuck, dude, this is hard. I, I'm having way more difficulty with this than I thought. Broken teeth. Pudgy, just sad, waiting. Maybe I'll be saved today. Maybe I'll be taken home. But even then, it's like not that much better. I think we talked about it. like this. Is this not that much better? You know, on a leash. And this is a hard world, man. It's a hard world. Being it's hard to be a human, man. You gotta make a lot of difficult choices and hard judgments. But yeah, this looks weird, doesn't it? Doesn't this look strange to you? Just imagine that. Feel that. Feel that. Are we all that different? We really aren't. How about this? The packing mule? How would you feel? Look at that. That's your life. You gotta wear a muzzle so you won't bite, or oftentimes they wear blinders. Oh, just taking pictures, just on travel. Oh, look at that. Oh, this one's just even just taking the luggage. Just, just luggage for that one. And like, yeah, this packing mule deserves that elation after. Not even should call it a packing. It's a mule. A mule deserves that elation because of all the things that have been done to it. We just, we enslave, we enslave everything, man. We suck. Here you go. Here's the big one, right? How do you feel? You want to you wanna drink milk anymore? How do you feel? You, do you still want to drink milk? I mean, cow's milk? Drink, you know, drink your mother's milk. Uh, what, what I had, what I had the experience of was, um, uh, drinking mother's milk. And then also, actually, I don't know if I had that experience because I, I don't have a, a regular mom. But then also, uh, Putting the putting the mammary fluid on on wounds is actually great. I've used it for cuts; it helps quite a bit. So there is a medicative aspect to mammary fluid, but this is not the way. This is wrong. Sorry. Look at that. The cow even looks kind of messed up. Like I don't know about this. Okay, this is a really trippy one. Look at that. The fish went hooking for you. Got a bunch of. Oh. Fish already, wait, just they're already dead, they're already ready to eat. And then you got the, oh, let's get another, yeah, let's get another. We got plenty of fish. Yeah. Let me show off my fish to everybody on the Facebook. You know, and then they, it's like, oh no, our family member, oh my God. Yeah. So I'm telling you, all these, a lot of, most animals I think are case strategists. They have families, they grow together. We just mess them up. Yep, cattle pride. Look at this. Tag on the ear. How does this make you feel? Everybody's there just waiting outside. They're going to get next. Going to get branded. There's probably more going on here than I'm seeing, but that's what I see. Branded. All right. Or maybe killed here. Maybe they're being killed here. I don't know. It's just evil. Yep, seal skin, human skin. Just wearing human skin. Just a my, this is uh, thank you so much barbara this you did the hard work you did the difficult work you get it clubbing seals this is just evil i think a lot of people this is on the long line of the dog fighting most people don't do this people think this is evil anyways but still people do this can you believe this look at that you kidding me are you kidding me are we that different no we're both mammals we both eat poop swim around play we should be playing. Humans should be playing. Humans are pretty neurotic nowadays because of money and tech, whatever. Satan system. Oh, okay. This is this is for me. This is the luau. I went to a luau. I didn't eat the pig. This was disgusting. They, I, we watched a video of it. Fucking, they, went, they go down underground, a little bit underground, and run around and chase the pig and stab it and gore it and then put an apple in its mouth and then heat it up over a fire or rotisserie style it's just disgusting does that how does that make you feel apples in the eye oh i didn't even notice that before barbara you did an amazing job this is oh this is relatable i bet you a lot of you can relate to this in the in the cave while these jezebel worshipers are outside this is how i feel most days of my life already i hate this place it's so bad <laughs> It's because I don't, you know, we're not optimizing our capacity to move collectively. We're just in 
enslaving each other. And, I mean, not really. It was a big club and we're not in it. Um, but yeah, living in a fishbowl makes you think of that Pink Floyd song again. Two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl. I mean, the house. The house is even weird in a way. You shouldn't be living too much in our house. You should be outside exploring God's creation as much as we can. But yeah, isn't this pretty fucking weird to put a fish in a bowl? Man, oh man. Um, this is more like the pet store. This could be like any little, you know, guinea pig. Um, I don't know why it's dogs here specifically because we already had the, um, the dogs. But yeah, this looks like guinea pigs and like hamsters to me. Um, this, it's just messed up. It's messed up how we behave. Yeah, more elephant. Just putting on a show. The circus is a really big topic. You actually got the downward pointing star there. So maybe... Barbara's onto that too. Or who isn't onto the downward pointing star? Come on. Just evil, Satan, dark shit. Don't don't go along with the circus. Circus is wrong. I mean the circus in terms of if people want to go do like acrobats, that's fine. Acrobatics and do fun performances, that's fine. But you know, anything animal related, what is that, dude? Come on. Elephants don't want to be treated like this. No animal wants this. Ooh, this one, I bet a lot of you feel this. This fucking weirdness at the dog park. How would you feel, man? Oh, you get to see out your little human. You get to see your little human. Oh, hi. I don't want to be too close. Don't want to fight. Oh, stay, you know, look at this. Not knowing. Like, this is so everywhere. Everywhere in the world, people are doing this. Every town, people are doing this. Oh, I don't know. Keep your humans on leash. We live in such a, this is really deeply affecting. This is really personal to some of you guys. I know it. Come on now. This is wrong. What are we doing? And then here. Oof. Feel that. What if it was tradition? Let's turn it around. Turkeys get their comeuppance. Just worship this stupid fake Native American pilgrim crap. The turkey, for whatever reason, is salt chosen. And then everybody gets turkeys. And all these turkeys are killed because of some weird tradition that's made up anyway. I hate Satan. I really do. But we gotta stop doing this. I don't eat turkey, obviously. This year I had pasta for Thanksgiving. Or whatever. Okay, and this is a this is a big one because it's so it's more subtle than a lot of these. You know, you have dogs? You know how dogs act when the fireworks go on? Look at them. Look at the humans in this situation. Oh, it's so scary. I don't what's all this noise? They have way more I mean rabbits are pretending to be humans here. So rabbits normally be fucked because rabbits have such good hearing, but what are we doing? What are we doing? This is just evil. Just fireworks, right? If we're going to do that, man, how do we even do fireworks effectively? Fireworks are just a bad thing, aren't they? But all the kaboom, I think of the military with these jets. I live in a town with these giant jets that were just with this big display and all these jets were going through. It was loud. I, I hated it. I hated it. It was so loud and annoying. So arrogant and just, it's all fake military stuff, right? And then what do you think it's doing to the animals? It's just, it's even worse. They have, they're way more attuned than we are. We're fucking, we're, sorry. We are uh, stunted. We are sensor, sensorily stunted. How do you feel about this? Oof. Little cheese, man trap, man trap. I've never laid, I mean, actually, that's a lie. When I was in Hawaii,